Ha <laughs> I'm back, baby! Well, not really. I mean, that video's been, like, unlisted and everything. Cause, like, Jesus Christ, last time I did a movie review was back in 2020. Good luck finding that video, nerds. Wink, wink. <laughs> it's so secret. It's so secret! But first, what is this movie? So basically, Deadpool and Wolverine is an action comedy superhero movie released this year in 2024. It was directed by Sean Levy and written, executive produced, and starring Ryan Reynolds. Oh, and Hugh Jackman is starring in it too. He, he's there too. Don't you forget it. It originally started development at 20th Century Fox, like the previous two Deadpool movies. But that was all put on hold when Disney acquired Fox like one of the stones on the Infinity Gauntlet. It also suffered through a bit of writer's block until Hugh Jackman showed up and was like, Oh yeah, mate, I'm from Australia. I'm gonna sign on and do this film. And then the film was halted again during the writer's strike in 2023. Which, that kind of sucked. But despite all its setbacks, it finally finished filming in January 2024 and was released almost a week ago as of this video's release. I mean... Obviously, right? We wouldn't be here talking about it otherwise if it didn't, so... The film obviously stars Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman as the titular Deadpool and Wolverine. The film also stars Emma Curran, Maria Baccarin, Rob Delaney, Leslie Uggams, Aaron Stanford, Matthew McFadden, and a ton of superhero cameos I shouldn't list here because they're technically spoilers. So, here's the spoiler-free version of the plot. Deadpool's story picks back up right after the post credit scene in Deadpool 2, where he goes back in time and everything, you know, and fixes things like preventing Vanessa's death, killing the Deadpool from X-Men Origins Wolverine, killing Ryan Reynolds so he doesn't play Green Lantern, yada yada yada. Well, this whole thing pisses off the Time Variance Authority, or the TVA as they're called. Basically, their job is to make sure that the timelines and the universes don't get fucked up. I, I don't quite understand it, I'm more of a DC fan, but... Here I am explaining it anyway. Deadpool meets this guy working at the TVA named Mr. Paradox. Ooh, I wonder what he does. And he informs Deadpool that his universe is dying. Now, every universe has a specific person, an anchor point if you will, that keeps the universe alive. And for nerdy maniacs, that of course is Max. I, I could never be an anchor point. Surprisingly, Deadpool is not the anchor point to his universe. It was actually Wolverine who, if you didn't know, died at the end of Logan. Uh, spoilers to that seven-year-old movie, I guess. A little too late. <laughs> um, anyway, Deadpool steals one of the time portal thingies that the TVA uses and finds a new Wolverine to replace the dead one in his universe. Unfortunately, as Mr. Paradox reveals, Deadpool found the worst Wolverine ever. And that his efforts to prevent his universe from being destroyed are absolutely fruitless. Oh, and to make matters worse, Mr. Paradox is like, You know what? Fuck you guys! I'm teleporting both of your asses to the void! And so now, they have to find a way back out of the void and stop Deadpool's universe from being destroyed. Anyway, back to Max and Jordan, who I'm hoping constructed their thoughts critically and without too many spoilers. Maybe. It's so secret! Just like all the secrets and stuff that they somehow managed to cram into this movie, like, woo, crazy. Good luck trying to find the Stan Lee cameo. Wait, there was a Stan Lee cameo? Maybe not. Maybe don't watch this if you haven't seen the film. Or listen to the chapters that Max marked in the video. Either way, I guess. Hey, I mean, it's not my fault that the movie gets spoiled for you, alright? I'm just here to do my job and explain things. That's, that's all I was hired to do. Because I was in the last movies with Max. Or I was supposed to be until Max decided to play my ass. And that was not cool. Not cool at all. In fact, they crammed in so many secrets, I'm surprised that they, like, well hid everything from everybody and just packed it in really well. It's like with Spider-Man No Way Home, where they had, like, so many secrets and stuff in it. Like, the extra Spider-Man and all the villains and stuff. Like... We all knew it was coming, and yet, you gave it to us. This is definitely a different story. There was definitely a lot more. Um, yeah, a lot. A lot, a lot, lot, lot more. But I guess we'll start with the spoiler-free part of the review. If you want to see the spoiler version, you gotta wait, I think. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you gotta wait. All so, right. let's talk about the movie. What'd you like about it? Funny as all hell. Oh yeah, the humor is 
definitely fucking there. And all the swearing and everything, too, like that fuck word I just dropped. Hoo -hoo. This is the only move. This is the movie you cannot go to the bathroom to. Like, you have to... No. And actually, you know what? My mom did actually go to the bathroom a couple times and did miss a couple things. A couple crucial things, too. A couple, like, I whoa miss. things, you know? So, yeah, definitely, if you're gonna go out and see the movie, make sure to pee really, really, really hard. And, uh, don't eat Taco Bell before the movie because your asshole will be begging for mercy. I'm not saying that I did that, but, uh, you know. It's a- it's a good precautionary thing, you know? You- you- you get what I'm saying, right? Don't drink a shit ton of soda, either. Yeah. That shit's gonna go right through ya, and you're gonna miss, like, the best moments of the whole movie. I hold real. mine in the entire, like, two hours. I went to the bathroom twice before the movie to make sure that I didn't have to pee or anything, cause, I swear, if I had missed any of the movie, I would've been so mad. And I didn't. And I got to see the whole thing, and the whole thing is... My god. Sure, some people might say that it's fan servicey as all hell, but I don't fucking care. It was a fucking great time. Combining everything together, and just really being like this little chef's kiss to all the movies that have come before it, from both the MCU and like the stuff that Sony and Fox was doing, more or less Fox. But, um, yeah. What felt off to me about the scene, I don't know if you had the same feeling, was when they did the, like, cast and everything, where they did, like, the opening credits roll. I found it a yeah. little strange that they had, like, the actual names of, like, the people in those roles, and not, like, what they did in the other two movies, which just a bunch of joke credits, like, God's Perfect Idiots and a moody teenager and all that stuff. Like, that felt I a little weird. And but... I I I but there is one thing I do like about that, and that is the fact that, yes, it, it, it does confirm Ryan Reynolds was indeed in control of the entire project. And that is what was very, very important to me and probably a bunch of other people was that Ryan was in control of this and not like uh, John Favreau or Kathleen Kennedy or whoever the fuck you want to blame for running the shit show over at Disney. The one I, thing he I didn't do. do, actually, interestingly enough, I looked on IMDb. Interestingly, Ryan Reynolds was not allowed to improvise any lines because of the writer's strike. But you don't even notice that because his humor is still on point from the previous two movies where it just, it doesn't even matter. Like, it's still genuinely funny and still got, like, that Ryan Reynolds Deadpool flair that you come to expect. And Hugh Jackman as Wolverine playing, like, this straight man that works extremely well. I mean, it's a tale as old as time dynamic, but it's one that I think that works exceptionally well because we had been waiting for this team up for years and we finally fucking got it! Let's go! And actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. It's obvious, but Deadpool and Wolverine is a hundred times better than any of the Fox films that came before it. Y you sink. Like, you I watched- them. I just watched, um, X-Men 1 and 2 earlier this morning because I hadn't seen those movies in several years, and yeah, a lot better than those. A lot better than- yeah, a lot better than the other MCU movies that have come out recently. Like, I also saw the Marvels, and that was okay. I don't know why people are hating on it. I thought it was okay. Nice little really fun diversion from things, you know? Listen, yeah, you... listen to me, people at home. Not every Marvel movie has to be like this whole groundbreaking, world-shattering, everybody's going to die things, okay? Sometimes they can just chill and just be like a little uh, adventure that Goofy. a group of characters go on. Okay? So chill. The Marvels was fine. Stop flaming it. Okay, we're, we're looking at like Ant-Man the Wasp. I liked uh, Quantumania. I also thought that was okay. MODOK yeah, was fucking weird, though. Fuck MODOK. But the rest yeah, of it was alright. It was also a decent little adventure. Whatever. It's all mm -hmm. whatever. But Deadpool and Wolverine, that is a must-see film. If you are a huge, huge fan of Marvel and everything superheroes, you gotta go fucking see this movie, alright? It will change your mind. It will blow your whole world apart. It's just... 
It's so fascinating. It's so funny. It's so action paced. It's got a lot of fights in it that are really well choreographed between Deadpool and Wolverine and Deadpool and Wolverine and other people. It's just. It's so fucking good. Oh my god. Deadpool and Wolverine yeah. does it well and it works beautifully with the plot. But at this point, the multiverse thing is becoming a tired trope. Because I've heard that as a common complaint amongst like other Marvel fans. I personally don't care. Whatever. But. It's becoming a point where it's become an overused trope, like cheesy dialogue or like stuff like that that has been in other superhero movies. Or like the typical like Marvel humor sort of thing. But like, who cares? This is all in good fun. Now you can look at it in any perspective you want. I looked at it at the perspective of like, I fucking love Deadpool and Wolverine and that's what I'm coming to see. I'm gonna have such a good and fun time and not give a shit about anything. In fact, I'm turning my brain off and letting my monkey brain go ooh ooh ah ah. So, you know, I had a great time with it. Overall, it was fucking fantastic. Even with all the nerdy stuff that I noticed afterwards and like stewed over in my brain, it's like, yeah, this was a great fucking time. And you know what? I dare say I had a lot more fun with this movie than I did with, like, No Way Home. Like, No Way Home is great, don't get me wrong. That's got a lot of great moments in it. But Deadpool and Wolverine, that's something even more special. Considering we had been waiting for this movie for six years, and we finally got it, and oh my god, it is just so great. An orgy of awesome, as I'd like to call it. So yeah. Definitely go out and see the movie if you haven't already. It's tickets at your local movie theater. <laughs> yes. This video is not sponsored by AMC Theaters, which might be the only theaters where you can get the fuckable Wolverine popcorn bucket. <laughs> no, but got nothing from the from the movie theaters we went. I saw it earlier. I didn't get anything. No, I didn't either. Everything was all sold out. I had seen it like a day after it actually came out, so everything was just gone. And you saw it today, and everything was gone, so... Might no, be a while before they restock. I'm hoping that they restock by the time my dad and I go to see it. So... Because I went with my mom, and now I get to go again with my dad. The joys of Ooh. divorced parents! Woohoo! <laughs> high five. Yeah, high five. Virtual high five. And everything. Well, well, We'll animate it. Yeah, or like do something like this. <laughs> there you go, that's your high five. You're welcome, editing me. Yeah, you should definitely see it. And also watch most of Marvel mo movies. Yeah, I bet you my grandma was so confused because she had only seen Deadpool 1 and 2 prior to seeing Deadpool and Wolverine. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and quote what she had commented on Facebook about that. She said, I have to say, I've never been a big fan of all these superhero movies, but now that I've seen Deadpool 1 and 2 and Deadpool and Wolverine, I'm now a Deadpool fan. And when Hugh Jackman ripped his shirt off, I'm now a Wolverine fan. So yeah, Hi, Mom. see all the movies or don't see all the movies. It might help you to understand things better, but you don't necessarily need them. It's still a good time without them. Speaking of Wolverine's ab, my mom did not did not like that. <laughs> my mom is the complete opposite. When he ripped off his shirt, it was like, oh my god. My Thousands like, of middle-aged women across the country orgasmed at the same time. Even all the gay guys finally lost all their edging streaks. <laughs> In that moment, people turned gay. <laughs> it was their gay awakening. If the X-Men animated series isn't your gay awakening, then this movie definitely is. <laughs> Especially that part when with the tailor and everything grabbing Deadpool's ass and crotch several times. <laughs> Are we in the spoiler section now? Did you want to be in the spoiler section now? I got I got some Okay, so tell me something. You look really excited to spoil the movie, so go ahead. Did not expect they're gonna pull out Fox properties in the movie. Yeah, basically the whole movie is like a love letter to Fox, because it's, because you know, Disney acquired Fox. Fox and everything. And Fox did technically start the superhero movies, like for like MCU with X Men. Didn't they also do Blade as well, or am I mixing that up with somebody else? No, Marvel did Blade. I think Marvel did Blade. Was that just Marvel that did? Well, I don't know. I've never seen any of the Blade movies. 
you have never seen Blade? No. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding you. God, well, he is the first spoiler. Blade's in it. <laughs> yeah. There's like a couple of things. I didn't. One thing I didn't like about the movie, the 616, when they put that up, where like Deb, uh, Hope, he's in, you know, he was Happy Hogan. Oh, yeah, at the beginning of the film? Yeah, no, that. I, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate that, because that's. I, that's com that's the comic universe. So it's not the MCU. MCU. The MCU is on a different Earth, isn't it? Yes, but six one six is like the comic Marvel universe, like the mainline comics that's established. So you think it would have made more sense if it was the MCU Earth then? It was the MCU Earth. They're just saying that it's six one six. They've been doing that. Since, since fucking Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness. Which I also haven't seen, so I didn't even know any of this. <laughs> God fucking damn it. I'm <laughs> sure so bad. Oh, wait but until like, wait until I tell him I haven't seen Across the Spider-Verse audience. <laughs> God damn, damn it. <laughs> I, I can't even say anything about that. It'll help me prove my point about why that's dumb. No, go ahead. Say it. I don't care at this All point. Right. When... Spider-Gwen and Miguel talk. Actually, I think this is in the trailer, actually, so it's not really a spoiler. They talk about No Way Home. Oh, yeah. Nine, I remember that from the home. trailer. That is literally the MCU universe. I don't know why they're talking about that shit. Why not? It's funny. Who cares, know, right? It, it, we must make the nerds get hard-ons for all these comic book references. No, they should have said that instead of 616, because that, that's making things really confusing. It sure is. Should have just done, like, 617. That would have cleared up everything. Nah, that's not, that's not the ultimate universe. Never mind. You know what? That's got me thinking about how when they cut back and, like, you see that way it's like a car salesman now, and then, like, later in the film, they drive a Honda Odyssey and he bitches about that. I thought it would have been funnier if they did a Kia Soul. <laughs> that way my sibling could get pissed off about it. Because <laughs> who, who likes driving a Kia Soul? Honestly, if you drive a I Kia agree. Soul, I, I'm so sorry. You... You just have no soul. And if you're a ginger driving a Kia Soul, then that means you, don't, you double don't have a soul. You go straight to jail. <laughs> you go straight to jail? You, not, not County, Alcatraz. You go in there with the Dementors. Alcatraz? You both oh. are the Dementors from Harry Potter. That's Azkaban! Too bad. They're, Alcatraz they're is the prisons. one that Al Capone went to. They merge prison. <laughs> they merge them together? Finally, some efficiency with all the multiverse bullshit. Basically, Blade, Elektra, Gambit, and X-23 yeah, are there. And Jan and Pam Gamble, not the one from X-Men Origins. Yeah, no, fuck the one from X-Men Origins. He fucking sucks. He doesn't even do the Cajun accent. But this Gambit? This, this Channing Tatum Gambit? that my mom really wanted to take his shirt off because he's Magic Mike. <laughs> that Gambit is actually good. Great Gambit. Best Gambit I've ever seen since the animated series. And I was born in the year 2002. So you know I'm him. serious. I know, because I made him watch it. <laughs> you made me watch it, yeah. Both yeah, the like, old one and the new chicken, one. Like chickens just strapped down watching all that. That's what I did to you. <laughs> yeah. Watch the cartoons! Yeah, so like, they, they were like this the resistance thing, so people- Yeah, the dead. others with, um, Blade, Electra, Gambit, uh, whatever and, her freaking name is. Lalandra, you know, like, the little girl that was in Logan. Yeah. <laughs> is it bad that I've never seen Logan? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I don't know movie. how I got through this movie without seeing, like, a majority of the X-Men films and Logan. But whatever, no dude. Wonder. I was here for Deadpool, and Deadpool... Oh my god, he's so sexy. I love him. I'm not gay, but, oh my god, those ass cheeks. Mmm. Play no them like bongos. And for, the, for and the Paradox guy, in the moment I heard that, I was thinking of, like, Dr. Paradox from, like, Ben 10. <laughs> I don't know who that is, but alright. I've never seen Loki. Wasn't Paradox in Loki? Uh... 
No, no, it's I think it's a different guy. Ed. Oh, okay. Cause I remember seeing this thing where it's like movies to watch before you go see Deadpool and Wolverine, and obviously Deadpool and like all the X Men films are there. But then you also had things like the Loki series, and there was Blade and uh, Daredevil and Elektra and the Fantastic Four movies. Basically, just all the Fox and MCU movies as well. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I did like the touch where they did make Wolverine's skeleton. Well, Logan skeleton. Oh yeah, at the beginning of the metal. movie when he like un <laughs> he basically desecrates Logan's grave and then uses his animanium skeleton to fight those TVA guys. That was really great. It's also the saber tooth fight, which I kind of wish they kind of extended it further. <laughs> oh yeah, and actually Ethan and I we um predicted what would happen with that. Ethan was like, oh yeah, they're just gonna do like a quick slash and then saber tooth's dead. What I thought would happen, and I thought it'd be funny, is if they did, like, the Emperor's New Groove, where, like, before they collided, Deadpool just, like, pauses the scene and, like, comes out with a red marker and is like, Remember, kids, this movie's about this guy, not this guy, alright? <laughs> like, I thought that would have been funny, but, I mean, we were both on the same page with that, where it's just like, boom, it's over <laughs> instantly. <laughs> It is nice they got, like, most of, like, the original X-Men villains to be in, like, Cassandra's, you know, little army. Oh, yeah. I think the only person I... the only person they didn't get back was Vinnie Jones' as Juggernaut, but I didn't even notice when I was watching the film, so it's fine. Whatever. If you hate- if you hated Pyro in the, in the X-Men trilogy, um, I hate to tell you this, but... He's just as insufferable in this as he is in those. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing he dies. <laughs> so at least there's that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, all the different X Men villains being there. That was definitely cool. And Human Torch as well. <laughs> that was really funny when he showed up. The moment Ethan and I saw him on screen, we were like, oh, yeah, if that ain't the Human Torch. And then it was, and it surprised my mom <laughs> who was sitting next to me. My mom was like, what? When he flamed on, it was great. Yeah, the ma major twist I got when Lo Wolverine was like explaining what happened to his X Men, I thought it was gonna be like an old man Logan situation. Like they they like brainwash him just to kill the X Men. Well, I don't know, but it's kind of weird that all the X Men just like died, all because Wolverine didn't do anything, and now he's considered the worst X Men. But whatever. I did like they did some comic like stuff when Deadpool was trying to find Wolverines. Oh yeah. They had different like died. variants of Wolverine from like the comics and stuff. Like the comic accurate height Wolverine. I thought that was really funny. <laughs> or Age of Apocalypse Wolverine where he just lost a hand and he go Or the um the eye patch one where he's like working with the Incredible Hulk or whatever. The Hulk's not there, but um that's what I first well well, technically the Hulk's there. Oh, and Calvarine! <laughs> you know what's funny is I knew immediately, like, oh yeah, that's Henry Cavill. But when we, um, when we finally got to the credits, my mom was, like, looking at the credits, and she was like, wait, Calvarine was played by Henry Cavill? I was like, yeah! The, hence the wordplay! Come on! <laughs> that was obvious! I guess not obvious enough, because he does look a little unrecognizable, which I guess is the point. Can we talk about the Deadpool core or like- And the mass? Deadpool core! The Deadpool core is there! They got Cowboy Deadpool and Baby Deadpool and Kid Pool and Dog Pool and Nice Pool and Lady Deadpool and Deadpool, 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 Deadpool! That, that, that is true. Yeah. I think my only problem with the Deadpool core- it, It's great. I love that the Deadpool core showed up. But my problem with it was they were fighting against the original Deadpool and Wolverine, which I found a little odd because in the comics, the Deadpool core is a thing with the original Deadpool, by the way, and they all like get along and everything. But here they're fighting against each other, which doesn't make sense at all. Uh, I think because Cassandra's like make that uh, tell them to or something. Ah, oh, Cassandra, that fucking bitch. I can't believe they got an actress that looks like James McAvoy. <laughs> it's almost like they were supposed to... Oh, wait, no, James McAvoy's not the... Should never mind. He's the current Magneto, right? Uh, 
No, no, th- no that, <laughs> that's Professor. That's a, that's Professor X. Well, who did you think I was talking about? Magneto? He's dead. Blade said, said he's dead. No, you said Magneto, and you got me confused. Oh, did I? I'll have to like look back and figure that out when I edit this. Um, whoops! Yes. I've never seen any of the prequel X-Men movies. I'm just guessing here. We're gonna see this after review. McAvoy or Stewart, these timelines are so confusing. You know what I don't understand? What's up? The ending scene where Ellie is there with Wolverine and, like, the rest of Deadpool's family. Why didn't they bring, um, like, Blade, Elektra, and Gambit over there, too? That would have also been great, and it would have also, like, set up future movies and stuff with them. Two reasons. One, they cost too much. Second... I feel like they're just wanting to like put them in their own thing. But Marvel owns all of them now. I know, but like. And there's supposedly a Blade movie coming out next year. Two, two of those movies came out like 2008 or six or something. Yeah, Gambit like never happened. It was like in development hell, and then got like canceled or whatever. Yeah. Which freaking sucks, cause like Channing Tatum Gambit, like I said earlier, was. Amazing. And actually, I do have a quote here. I'll pull this back up because I just put this in quotes. Gambit's my favorite. I'm from New Orleans, around that area. My dad's from New Orleans, and I like to do a Cajun accent. I could do it for real. No knocks on Taylor Kirsch, though. That's the one that played the bad Gambit, by the way. Because I always liked his Gambit, but I always lived around Cajun people. Gambit was always that woman-loving, cigarette-smoking, drinking guy. He was the punk rock of all the superheroes. This was said in 2013 in an interview, by the way. Yeah, if you didn't know, Channing Tatum had been, like, considered for the role of Gambit ever since X-Men The Last Stand, I think. So, yeah! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad we finally got that! Check that off the list. I'm sure my cousin was also very happy because he is in love with Gambit. <laughs> Anyway, the people who are like, uh, I at for like the ending, I did like how they put a little like f- fan reel of the original Fox X Men movies. Oh yeah, that was pretty nice. Up until I saw Fantastic Four 2015, and I went boo! Cause fuck that movie. I was dragged out to see that movie by my cousin, and it was the worst movie I had ever seen. It was a waste it of my two hours on this earth, and I would love to have them back. And all the other times where my cousin has made me watch shitty movies like Punisher Warzone and Sausage Party. Oh yeah, the Punisher is dead. Yeah, Punisher's also dead too. Oh well. Don't, don't ask which one. They, they, they j- just pick a random one. They don't specify which one. There's but a bunch what, of them, but, but there's only but one please. blade. So, for you know, now, come back. The closing statement: Yes, Wolverine and Sabretooth are brothers. You can't. That's an unescapable fact in the movies. So. <laughs> that's our closing statement: Is that that's Wolverine and Sabretooth are brothers? Yeah, and end the video right there. Just, just like cut the black. Brothers will kill brothers, spilling blood across the land, <laughs> killing for religion. <laughs> Something I don't understand. See, Bailey's not the only one who makes song references. I also do. 